So, in a bilobe anther, this is a bilobe anther. In one lobe of the anther, there are two microsporangia. And then in this another lobe, there are there is again two microsporangia. And this is the connective. So now the the anther is composed of the anther wall and the microsporangia. Anther wall is this part. From here till here is the anther wall. Anther wall. And this oval shape is the micro poran -ja. So now we shall study about the anther wall. The anther wall is composed of four layers. The first layer is known as the epidermis. The first layer is known as the epidermis. Epidermis is a single layer. Single layer flat cells. The next the next layer Below the epidermis, the second layer, which is below the epidermis, is the endothelium. Endothelium is arranged radially below the epidermis cells. It is it is more it is not a flat cells and it is arranged radially and in between this endothelium and in between this endothelium present a cellos present a cellos but we cannot see here so below the epidermis the second layer which is below the be, which is below or beneath the epidermis is the endothelium endothelium this endothelium also is a single 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 layer cells then The third layer of the anther wall, which is present beneath the endothelium, is the middle layer. It is the middle layer. The middle layer is composed of three to four layer of cells. And it is arranged not so tightly. It is arranged loosely. But it is composed of three to four layers. Three to four layers. This is the middle layer. These three layers of anther wall, 
these three layers of anther wall they helps in the dehiscence of the anther dehiscence of the anther when the when the anther mature these three layers ruptures and they become fibrous and and they become fibrous out of from all these layers this is the point of dehiscence point of dehiscence and when the anther become matures these this these three layers of anther wall they become rupture they become rupture and they become fibrous and they helps in the dehiscence of the anther the the the, the region which which are for the dehiscence of the anther is this part this is the po point of dehiscence when all the regions of the anther they become mature but only this point it, it it doesn't does not rupture and it does not become fibrous so the next layer and beneath the middle layer the last layers of the anther wall is a tapetum a tapetum is an epidermal a tapetum suppose this is the microsporangium the tapetum is a pyramidal a pyramidal shape a tapetum is the pyramidal shape the tapetum is present below the middle layer a tapetum is a pyramid it is it has a pyramidal shape pyramidal shape and it is a multinucleated it is a multinucleated cells why it is a multinucleated cells because of the endomitosis because of the endomitosis endomitosis now we shall see the functions of tapetum functions of a tapetal cells The tapetal cells, number one, they give nutrition. To the developing microspores, and then second one, the tapetal cells they secrete enzyme and the third one they secrete ubis body this ubis body this ubis body helps in the secretion of Poro pollenin. The sporopollenins helps in the in the in the formations of the outer layer of a pollen grain, which is known as the exine. And the last function 
the tapetums they secretes a pollen kit. Pollen kit is a sticky substance present on the pollen grain which help for pollination. The sticky substance present on the exine present on the surface of a pollen grain for, which helps in pollination. Be, just because of this sticky substance, they got stuck on any pollinators like insects and from that it helps in the pollination. Thus, this concludes the internal structure of anther.